are you saved, where will you spend eternity? When you say, where are you saved, some people might say, saved from what? Saved from who? Are you saved eternally by the blood of Jesus Christ? Do you know for sure today that God has saved you by his marvelous grace? Do you know today that if you were to die, do you know that you would spend eternity in heaven? Do you know that you're going to be a part of what God's doing eternally? Or will you paying, be paying for your sin debt eternally? That's the question. Where will you spend eternity? And I hope today that you know that you're saved. And what I want to talk to you today is how to know you're saved for sure and know it. And I want to talk to you about this, this little bulletin that I wrote. It's uh, a track on salvation by grace through faith. And hopefully you'll have one of these as well as the DVD or CD or whatever you're listening to. I want to talk to you from a passage of Scripture found in the book of Romans, chapter number 3. Romans, chapter number 3, verse number 20, uh, verse number 19. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all, and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God to declare I say at this time his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus where is boasting then it is excluded by what law of works nay but by the law of faith therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also, seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and the uncircumcision through faith. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid, yea, we establish it. And God will add his blessing to the reading of his word. And I want you to think about that. Are you saved? Where will you spend eternity? Will you spend eternity in the lake of fire? Or will you spend eternity being a part of what God's doing eternally? Will you get to be with him? Or will you get to be in the place where Satan's going to be? The devil. Lucifer. He's degenerated ever since his fall. Ever since he's tried to take and be a part of the ownership of heaven and earth. He's tried to usurp God's authority in heaven. He's tried to usurp God's authority in earth. And ever since that time, he's been in a degenerate stage from Lucifer all the way down to serpent, to the devil, to the dragon in the book of Hebrews, I mean in the book of Revelation. And then ultimately, he's going into the lake of fire eternally. Will you be with him paying your own sin debt? Or will you allow Jesus Christ to pay your sin debt on the cross of Calvary? He already did. You just have to trust him, believe in him, and then God will save you and that Jesus Christ will pay your sin debt and you won't have to. Friend, if you don't place your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, you're going to have to pay your own sin debt. And the way you get around that is that you trust Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Jesus Christ died upon the cross of Calvary for your sins. I want to put just a little bit of a drawing up here. It's basically just the cross. Jesus Christ died upon the cross of Calvary. He suffered. He shed his blood. He died for your sins upon the cross of Calvary. And he died and paid your sin debt. And he was separated from the Father so that you would not have to be eternally separated from God. He was separated for you on your behalf to keep you from being separated. Uh, separated from God eternally to keep you from being in the lake of fire eternally God loves you 
Christ Jesus the Lord loved you so much he died for you upon the cross of Calvary. He died, he was buried. And friend, listen, on that third and glorious day, Jesus Christ arose from the dead. He is put in that old bar of tomb. Tomb, hewn out in the rocks, and Jesus Christ was buried there in that old tomb. But thank God on the third day, he arose from the grave. And if you'll place your faith and trust in Christ today, God will save you by his marvelous grace. Now listen to the word of God. Romans 3.19, Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law. What's the purpose of the law? That every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Do you realize today you're guilty before God today? If you've never been saved by God's grace, you're guilty. You're a sinner. You're without hope. I stand before you today. I'm preaching from an inerrant book, God's perfect word. I'm not perfect on the outside. However, I am perfect on the inside because I've been saved by God's grace. One day I'll have a body that will be eternal. It will be a glorified body, and it will be without sin one day when Christ returns to take his people home. Verse 19, Now we know that what things soever the law saith, said to them that are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, because of that, the law is given to make you guilty before God. Therefore, on those bases, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. The law wasn't given so you could live the law perfect and get to God. The law was given so you'd know. You've got to know a damnic nature about you. And you can't be righteous. You can't be perfect in yourself. And you couldn't live good enough to get to God if you wanted to. The law is given so that you might know that you are a sinner. You can't keep it. You know you're unworthy. And God says, therefore, by the deeds of the law, by the deeds of the law, doing the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. You cannot be made righteous in God's sight because you've done this or you've done that or you kept this or you kept that. You're guilty before God. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. The law is given so that you'll know you're a sinner. Verse 21. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. Today, the only way that you can get righteousness, the only way that you can get righteousness, It's through the Lord Jesus Christ who died for you upon the cross of Calvary. The only way you can stand before God in a righteous state is stand before God eternally is to have 100% total righteousness. And to have that, you must be in Christ. You must believe what Christ done for you. But now the righteousness of God is... Uh, without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets... Even the righteousness of God, what righteousness of God? Which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Do you realize today that you sinned and come short of the glory of God? You say, not me, preacher. I'm living good. I'm, I'm living right now. Well, what about in the past? You realize it don't take but one sin to make you a sinner? Only one sin will place you in the lake of fire eternally. One. And you've committed a whole lot more than that. The Bible says, Him that knoweth to do good and doeth not him is sin. What about that? God says, the Bible says, foolish thought, sin. You ever had a foolish thought? That's enough to send you to the lake of fire eternally. You're not righteous. You're without righteousness and you need God. For all of sin to come short of the glory of God. Now listen to verse 24. Being justified freely being made righteous. Justified means righteous. Righteousness. The way you get righteousness is through Christ. Being justified. Being righteousfied. We don't have a word in the English language that means righteousfied. We don't, it don't say righteousfied. It means being made righteous. Justified. Justification. Being made righteous. 
being justified freely. Freely. It didn't cost you anything. It cost Christ his life. He died on the cross, was buried, and rose again the third day. Over and over, I've said that to you already in the beginning. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Now, if you take this little track, I hope that you get one along with the DVD. If you'll look right inside of this uh, little track here, you'll find where it talks about justified. It talks about faith. It talks about the faith of Christ. It talks about redemption. It has a definition here. It says, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. What does redemption mean? Redemption means, and I'm reading this to you right from the pamphlet you can have. Redemption has to do with somebody paying the price to get you out of the predicament you're in. Jesus Christ did for man what man could not do for himself. He paid the sin debt of man in full by giving his life on the cross a ransom for all. He paid the price to redeem you from all your sin. And that's exactly what redemption means. Christ paid your price. The wages of sin is death. Romans chapter number 6, verse number 23 says, let me read that to you. Romans 6, 23. For the wages of sin is death. The payment for your sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You're going to die because of sin. And to avoid death eternally, the second death in the lake of fire, to avoid that death, you have to trust Jesus Christ for his righteousness, to cleanse you of your sin, to forgive you of your sin. He's your redemption. He paid your redemption price. He is. There's where redemption is. It's in Christ Jesus. He paid your sin debt, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation. God set Jesus Christ forth to be a propitiation. What does that mean? Also, it's found in the bulletin. Propitiation is God Almighty's justice being satisfied. God Almighty's justice being satisfied. As God sitting on the throne as the judge, you stand before him guilty of sin, guilty the way that God's justice is satisfied towards you to look at you and say, okay, you're forgiven, you're righteous. You have to trust His Son, Jesus Christ. He is the propitiation. He satisfied God's wrath against your sin, taking that wrath for you. He suffered the wrath of Almighty God as He hanged between heaven and earth. That cup, if you study it in the Bible, was God's wrath being poured out on sinful mankind. Christ, according to 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, He was made sin for you. Jesus Christ Himself, who knew no sin, was made sin for you. He became sin so that you could have the righteousness of God. That's what He's talking about in the passage. Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood, through faith in His blood to declare His righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. The sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. If you forbear with somebody, you put up with it. You deal with it. And God forbear with all the sins of the world from all the way to the cross, all the way back to Adam. God forbear. All the sin of mankind back down through time. God forbear with those sin. Forbearance. To declare, verse 26, I say at this time, His righteousness, that He might be just and the justifier of Him which believeth in Jesus. To declare, I say at this time, Paul, doing the writing here in the book of Romans, you're on past the cross out this way now. And Paul says, at this time. And you can actually put that right now is the time where you and I are today. He forbear. 
And at this time, to declare, I say, at this time, his righteousness, his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Where is boasting then? Can you stand up and boast about how righteous you are? It is excluded. Nope, you've not lived the law. You've not lived good enough. Let me read it all together. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified. What does justified mean? Go back to the pamphlet. To declare righteous. To pronounce righteous. To regard as righteous. Therefore, we conclude that a man is declared to be righteous by faith without the deeds of the law. My friend, if you'll place your faith and trust in the fact that Christ died for your sins on the cross, he shed his blood for your sins, died, was buried, and rose again the third day, when you believe that and you place your faith there eternally, God will save you by His marvelous grace. He'll cleanse you of all your sin, past, present, and future. And He'll save you by His marvelous grace. And you can have the righteousness of God. Therefore, you can be with God eternally with what He's doing eternally. And you won't be in the lake of fire burning and paying your own sin debt because you've trusted one who paid your sin debt for you. You either trust Him or you pay your own pretty simple to be saved by God's grace. Is he the God of the Jews only? Verse 29. Well, you've heard about the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. You've heard about the church, the body of Christ. Maybe you hadn't. Maybe you think the day at Pentecost that uh, all the 12 tribes became all of us. Maybe that's where a lot of misunderstanding about the God's word comes into play. I'm going to do a second message behind this one but you'll have to get another disc for it. The 12 tribes of Israel God had them before the cross. At this time there's one new man. There's a 7-year tribulation period coming. in which God will focus back on the twelve tribes of the nation of Israel. Today, folks, it's one new man. Today it's Jew, Gentile, bond, or free. It makes no difference. When you're saved, you're not made a part of some twelve tribes. You're made a part of one new man. And besides all of that, the main thing this message is for and the main thing this DVD is for and CD is for you to know that you're saved eternally by the cross work of Jesus Christ. The 12 tribes and the one new man, everybody's saved by the same principle. It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. Jesus Christ died for man's sin. He was buried and he rose again on the third day. And that, my friend, is how you become saved by God's grace. Verse 29. Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. Seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith. The circumcision. The twelve tribes of Israel the Jews are considered the circumcision. God said he was going to save them by faith. By faith, they have kept the law. They didn't keep it perfect. They had to do sacrifices weekly, daily, monthly, yearly. They had sacrifices that they took care of to take care of their sin. And that's how God forbear with them. And it was by their faith they'd done these things. And folks, you and I, through faith, look back to the cross 
And it's through our faith resting in what Christ done that brings salvation to us. And you, uh, the Gentiles, if you'll, if you'll study your Bible, you'll find out the Gentiles were called the uncircumcised dogs. The Gentiles are called the uncircumcision. The verse reads, Seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith, and the uncircumcision through faith. Do we then make void the law through faith? Do you cancel out the law through faith? Do you just say, well, the law is no good, it's done, it's over with? Do we make void the law through faith? God forbid. Yea, we establish it. How do you establish the law by faith? The way you establish the law is, why was the law given? Therefore by the deeds of the law there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. You establish the law. Why? Because the law says you're guilty before God. You said, oh, I'm guilty. You establish the law because the law done its job. It made you a guilty party before God. You're full of sin. You need salvation in Christ gave it to you on the cross of Calvary. He died for your sins. He was buried. And he rose again the third day. You established the law because it made you guilty and you trusted Christ through faith. That's how you establish it. Let me give you two passages and I'll be through. 1 Corinthians chapter number 15. Paul preaching the gospel. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received and wherein you stand, by which also ye are saved. And my question to you in the beginning was, are you saved? Saved from what? Saved from who? Are you saved? Are you saved eternally so that you don't die and go to hell? So that you don't spend eternity in the lake of fire burning in, in agony because you didn't trust Christ? Are you saved? Here's the gospel that brings salvation. We've been talking about it already. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand, by which also ye are saved, if you keep in memory what I have preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Well, are you saved? If I was to ask you today, how do you know you're saved, could you tell me how you know? The way you know is you keep in memory what Paul preached unless you believed in vain. That's what the verse says. He says, By which also you are saved if you keep in memory what I preached unto you unless you have believed in vain. What did Paul preach? For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scripture. He didn't die in a car wreck. He didn't die by getting his head chopped off. He died according to the Scriptures. He died upon the cross of Calvary. He died for your sins. He shed his precious blood. He was buried and he rose again the third day. That's what these verses say. The Gospel that you're to trust, that you're to believe for salvation. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Jesus Christ paid your sin debt. He shed his precious blood on the cross of Calvary so that you could have God's righteousness placed to your account. And when you trust Jesus Christ, Thank God you believe he died for your sins, you believe he was buried, and you believe upon that third and glorious day Jesus Christ arose from the grave. That's the gospel message that you're to believe in how you're saved. Now watch what the book of Ephesians says happens when you do that. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7, in whom we have redemption. You remember we talked about redemption earlier. It's in the pamphlet here. In whom we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Verse 13. 
in whom, the Lord Jesus Christ, ye also trusted to hope in advance of other confirmation. All you have is God's word on it, that Christ died for your sin, was buried, and rose again. And you trust God's word by faith that Christ done that for you. You say, I don't know about that. I know God exists. Well, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost is in creation. It's in the universe. And Romans 1.20 says, if, in this, not in these exact words, but this is what it says, because of the manifestation of the eternal Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, in creation, man will be without excuse. If you don't see God in creation, you'll be without excuse. you know that? How many joints you got in your finger? Well, three of them. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. How many joints you got in your arm? God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. You're made up of flesh, blood, and bone. You're made up in the Trinity of God, in the Godhead. For light in this universe, you have the sun, the moon, and the stars. All the animal, all the life on planet Earth is animal life, plant life. And... Mineral life. You got three forms of life. I tell you, if you don't see God in creation, you'll be without excuse. And he says very plainly here, in whom ye also trusted, after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. The word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed. You were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. The moment you believe that gospel message, and then you place your faith and your trust in that message, that's when God saves you by His marvelous grace. When you by faith believe and trust in the cross work. Verse 14, which is the earnest of our inheritance. It's the down payment to our eternal inheritance, being saved and having his righteousness eternally. Not having to be in the lake of fire eternally, but to be a part of what God's doing eternally by our faith resting in his son Jesus Christ, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession. You're bought and paid for when you by faith trust Christ and believe in what he done. You're a purchased possession under the praise of his glory. When is the redemption? When does the redemption take place? Before that seven year tribulation period, God's body, the one new man, the body of Christ, is going to hear a trumpet sound. You've probably heard it called the rapture. Christ will step out on the clouds and he'll call us home and the church, the body of Christ, will go out to meet the Lord in the air. The dead in Christ will rise first, then we which are alive remain and be called up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 18. That's when we're called out to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. That, my friend, is the day of redemption. And the moment you believe that Christ died for your sins, was buried and rose again the third day, God by his Holy Spirit seals you by his Holy Spirit until that time we go out to meet the Lord in the air God saves you eternally by his marvelous grace trust Christ and be saved will you and I hope that you'll take this message this DVD CD and you'll take this pamphlet and you'll by faith trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior trust him today thank you Lord for this time that we've had to spend together on this DVD and CD Lord, for the time over the Internet, and Lord, I pray that your salvation would touch the hearts and the lives of men and women, boys and girls who watch this, who read these pamphlets. May they be saved by your marvelous grace. Right now, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And friend, if you will look for it, hopefully there will be a second DVD following that will help you even explain even further God's salvation in the twelve tribes of the nation of Israel and the one new man, the church, the body of Christ, help you understand even more about this precious book that God's given you, the Holy Bible, the King James Bible, to English-speaking people is God's perfect word. Good day.